scientists have discovered life on a piece of rock returned from an asteroid. But, plot twist, all is not what it seems. This life appears to come from Earth. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we're going to talk about the microorganisms found on the Ryugu asteroid. So let's begin. This is Allen Hills 84001, a fragment of a meteorite that was found in the Allen Hills area in Antarctica back in December 27th, 1984. It was found by a team of meteorite hunters that was thought to have originated from Mars. However, it wasn't quite like any other Martian meteorite ever found before. This is thought to be one of the oldest Martian meteorites that had crystallized from molten rock four billion years ago. From chemical analyses, it was suggested that it originated on Mars when there was liquid water on that planet's surface. In 1996, over a decade after its discovery, a team of NASA scientists got the meteorite and put it under a scanning electron microscope. And they were completely shocked at what they found chains of structures that resembled living organisms. Now these structures were just 20 to 100 nanometers in diameter, so they were so much smaller than any cellular life known at that time. So everyone was convinced. President Bill Clinton even came out to make an announcement. Today, Rock 84001 speaks to us across all those billions of years and millions of miles. It speaks of the possibility of life. If this discovery is confirmed, it will surely be one of the most stunning insights into our universe that science has ever uncovered. This was the first solid evidence of the existence of extraterrestrial life. They discovered fossils of bacteria-like life forms, alien life forms, until it wasn't. Very quickly, people realized that there were other, more earthly explanations for the strange structures found within this meteorite. The initial excitement began to wane as scientists from other fields kind of scrutinized NASA's findings. For example, the size of the structures was problematic. They were just simply too small to contain the complex machinery necessary for life as we know it. Even the most basic bacteria on Earth require a minimum certain volume to house their DNA and essential proteins. Geologists pointed out that these nanofossils could be explained by inorganic processes, such as the crystallization of minerals under high pressure. And then chemists came out to argue that the organic molecules found in the meteorite could have been introduced through terrestrial contamination. So the consensus kind of shifted from Allen Hills 84001 contained a definite proof of Martian life to it was probably just contamination. Although this debate is still continuing, the research goes on. But since then, there have been countless claims of discovery of extraterrestrial life in meteorites. Meteorites, as we all know, have been exposed to terrestrial environment, and therefore we can't really rule out that any life forms found on it isn't due to contamination from the Earth. And that's why we need to bring back samples to the Earth in a pristine-like case for analyses, so it's not contaminated. Only under these stringent contamination controls can we really be sure any signs of life are extraterrestrial in nature. Or can we? So in 2020, Japanese space agency JAXA returned samples from a near-Earth asteroid, Ryugu, on the Hayabusa 2 mission. And it all came back in these gas-tight sealed containers that were opened under nitrogen. Nitrogen is an inert gas. It doesn't react well with other substances. This makes it really ideal to create this protective atmosphere around the meteorite sample. And by opening the container in a nitrogen field environment, you prevent any Earth-based microbes or particles from coming into contact with the meteorite and then potentially contaminating it. And this was all done in a class 10,000 clean room, which means that the room that it was opened in had less than 10,000 particles per cubic foot. Now, to put that into perspective, if a particle were the size of a football and the clean room were 17,000 meters long, it would just contain one football. 
that's roughly the size of the city of Coventry. So imagine one football in the entire city of Coventry. That's how clean this room was. The sample was then divided and distributed to science teams around the world. And today we're looking at this particular study by Matt Genge and his friends. So like the NASA team, they stuck the asteroid under a scanning electron microscope, an SEM. The researchers found an abundance of organic matter. Now, organic matter is carbon-based compounds that are the building blocks of life as we know it. These come from living things or once living organisms, but they can also be formed through non-biological processes. The SEM also revealed rods and filaments of organic matter, mostly on the surface of the meteorite, but also in its cavities. Now the rods and filaments tended to cluster around these dolomite grains, but more intriguingly, the number of these rods and filaments were increasing over time. So in preparation for the SEM, the meteorite sample actually underwent some polishing. And before this polishing were to start, they actually took some x-ray tomography of the sample. And during that stage, they found no signs of these rods and filaments. But it was just seven days after polishing, 11 of these rods and filaments were observed in the first SEM examination, and this grew to 147 by the second examination 19 days later. To check their find, a scientist compared the images to common fibers in the lab that might have contaminated the sample. Now these were things like human hair, fibers from clothing, fibers from the polishing pads, and laboratory wipes, all of that stuff. The rods and cells looked nothing like these. They looked like life. These rods and cells looked like life. Jackpot, they had discovered life on an asteroid. Now, if this were real, it would have been massive because it means that panspermia, the idea that life could spread throughout the universe by hitching rides on asteroids and comets, would gain immense credibility. It would mean that life isn't confined to planets, but could be hopping between our stellar systems, carried on asteroids. It would revolutionize our understanding of life's origins and distribution. Life would need to be super resilient to withstand these extreme conditions of space travel. But more importantly, we might not be alone in the universe. There might be more of us out there. But don't celebrate too quickly. The rods and filaments may not look like the average fibers in the air, but they do share in a resemblance to prokaryote microorganisms found on Earth. They share the same broadly cylindrical carbonaceous structure with similar size and size distributions. And more importantly, on analysis, it's shown that they also multiply at that same rate. Another clue that the findings might not be extraterrestrial was that when they repolished the meteorite, they found no rods and filaments for over four months. And since the microbes didn't reappear after repolishing, that could only mean one thing, that the microorganisms had colonized only the exposed surface of the meteorite and not the inner regions. So even after all those stringent contamination control measures, terrestrial microorganisms managed to rapidly colonize the sample. While the discovery of life on an asteroid would have been a monumental leap forward for our understanding of life's potential in the universe, it's equally important to emphasize the need for scientific rigor as these scientists have shown. The search for life beyond Earth continues. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. than light, soaring past Mars, unveiled.